The ninja, also known as shinobi, are enigmatic figures shrouded in mystery and folklore. Historically, they often acted as mercenaries, specialising in ambush tactics, guerrilla warfare, espionage, and subterfuge. Spies and infiltrators, the covert ways of the ninja, were seen as dishonourable, but their secretive nature has captured imaginations through the ages. Portrayed in popular culture as unmatched martial artists, wielders of supernatural powers, masters of self, and usually bristling with cool and dangerous weapons, these shadowy figures have unsurprisingly become mainstays of the video gaming world. Anyone can put on a hood and pyjamas and wave a pointy stick around, though. In fact, I do it most evenings, and can barely be considered a ninja. However, we're interested in only the absolute best for this list, the cream of the ninja crop. A couple of rules, one ninja per franchise, and every ninja on this list has to have originated in video games, if only to stop four of this list being taken up by a quartet of mutant turtles. But other than that, it's free for all ninja combat out there. Keep your heads down, okay? Shuriken are sure to be flying all over the place. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 coolest ninjas in video games. Number 10, Sekiro. Sekiro, the titular ninja from From Software's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, is commonly known as Wolf, and is a highly skilled shinobi and protector of Kuro the Divine Heir. He is also one of two ninjas on our list today with a missing arm, which he lost in a deadly moonlit battle with Junichiro Ashina. In the aftermath of this cinematic confrontation, Sekiro is found by a retired shinobi known as the Sculptor, and fitted with a nice prosthetic arm. Granted immortality by the Divine Heir's mysterious powers, it's now Sekiro Sekiro's job to track down his kidnapped charge and get his own back on the fellow that disarmed him, literally. Being the star of a From Software game, Sekiro's surroundings and predicament tend to be pretty serious and grim, and as such, his personality reflects that. As close to a realistic ninja, who did regularly act as bodyguards, as you're going to find in this video, Sekiro starts things off nice and grounded. And yes, I am aware that he fights a giant ape that flings poo and keeps fighting when it's been decapitated, and I'm also aware that he takes on a snake that's approximately the length of 37 articulated lorries, but that's really as grounded as you're going to get on a list full of video game ninjas. Case in point, number 9, Genji. Yep, number 9 and we're already at the cyborg ninjas. Genji Shimada is a cybernetically enhanced ninja from Overwatch, with a super cool glowing green sword. During the average match, Genji will stalk about the battlefield, flinging shuriken from afar and slicing opponents in deadly flanking attacks with his wacky zashi. When unleashing his ultimate attack, known as Dragon Blade, the aforementioned glowing green sword comes into play. Genji unsheaths the katana and becomes a blur of destruction, felling opponents with swift deadly strikes. Of course, getting in close enough to poke things with a sword in a game like Overwatch is risky business, but Genji's superhuman agility is usually enough to get him out of an awkward situation should any opponents still be standing after the melee. There is a rival ninja in the Overwatch roster who would lay claim to Genji place on this list, his older brother Hanzo. This ninja assassin sports some stylish tattoos, fights with a bow rather than a sword, and is probably named after famous historical real-life ninja Hattori Hanzo. We went with Genji though because of the whole cyborg ninja thing. Oh, and did we mention the glowing green sword? Number 8, Sheik. You might be wondering what Sheik is doing on this list. After all, in a story twist whose fame is second only to the fate of Eris, Sheik is revealed to be none other than Princess Zelda herself, who is a princess, and not a ninja. Well, firstly, princesses can totally be ninjas if they want to be, and secondly, Sheik is initially presented as being a member of the Sheikah tribe, and those guys, well, they're definitely ninjas. First appearing in Zelda lore in the Ocarina of Time, the Sheikah are a race of secretive people, dedicated and on a bound to the protection and preservation of the royal family of Hyrule, and as revealed in Breath of the Wild, they even live in secluded ninja villages. When Sheik first starts appearing to Link, back when she was pretending to be a bloke, she says that she's the last survivor of the Sheikah tribe, and has all the trappings of a ninja, excelling in combat, subterfuge, speed, and stealth. This ninja-like behaviour is further accentuated by her appearance in the Smash Bros series, and in Hyrule Warriors, where her fighting style is extremely ninja-y. And so I rest my case. Sheik is a ninja, and is also secretly a princess, and that makes her pretty darned cool. Number 7, Yoshimitsu. 
Fighting games are always good for a ninja or two, and this particular ninja has appeared across two of the best examples of the genre, first showing up in Tekken, which is set in 1994, and later appearing in the Soul Calibur series, which is set in the 16th century, Yoshimitsu is either immortal, a time traveller, or there have been generations of ninja behind those bizarre masks. Honestly, anything is possible when it comes to this guy. Despite his strange and somewhat threatening appearance, Yoshimitsu is actually an all-round nice chap. Be the leader of a clan that takes delight in robbing those who profit from unjust acts, then returning their proceeds to the poor and needy. Incidentally, Yoshimitsu is also the other ninja on this list to have an artificial arm. Although if the early Tekken lore is to be believed, he might actually be a robot from space anyway, in which case all of him is artificial. We'll probably never know what's going on with Yoshimitsu, which just makes him all the more intriguing, and that's what earns him a place on our list. That and the whole using his sword as a pogo stick during combat thing he's got going on. Number 6. Valentine what do you get when you cross a ninja with a naughty nurse? No, seriously, it's not a setup for a joke. I'm asking what you think that would look like. Stumped? Well, the result would probably look something like villainous healthcare shinobi Valentine from Skullgirls. Valentine is an antagonistic presence throughout the story mode of most of the characters, serving the Skull Girl and showing little remorse for her murderous ways. Like all good ninjas though, she does have a hidden past, once being a member of a group of fighting medics called the Last Hope, who were wiped out by the Skull Girl. Obviously affected by this traumatic event, Valentine becomes the ninja nurse we know and fear today, whose attire is surgical in nature and attacks make use of syringes, IVs, drip stands and even gas and air. I mean, there's definitely some kind of of gas in that tank anyway. Probably not much in the way of air. In a medium that's full of ninjas with magical powers, ninjas with robotic parts and ninjas from space, Valentine's medical overtones actually make her pretty unique, earning her a very respectable place in our shrine of sensational shinobi. Just don't go to her if you've got a cold, okay? Number 5. Greninja Speaking of unique, here's a ninja that's so ninja that ninja is practically its species. This guy didn't go to ninja school or grow up in a ninja clan, Greninja just is a ninja. In fact, it evolved into a ninja from its previous forms, both of which are basically a weird frog. How's that for an upgrade? In the Pokemon games, Greninja is a water and dark type Pokemon, and being the third form of one of the sixth generation starters, already has a decent chance of becoming pretty well known. Its cool ninja status, however, propelled it even further into the limelight, eclipsing other ninja-like Pokemon like Ninjask and Excelgor, and eventually appearing as a playable character in Smash Bros. Oh, and also Greninja was also heavily featured in the Detective Pikachu movie, which did a good job of illustrating how effective those froggy ninjas can be. Interestingly, Greninja's blue colouring and strange cloak-like tongue makes it look similar to fellow cool gaming ninja Strider Hiryu from afar. I wonder if this was a conscious shout-out. Either way, it gives us a chance to mention another super cool ninja who didn't quite stride into the top 10. Maybe next time, fella. Number 4. Joe Musashi Joe Musashi from Sega's Shinobi series is one of gaming's classic ninjas, and sometimes the classics truly are the best. Originally appearing in 1987 arcade game Shinobi, a maskless Joe Musashi takes on longtime foes, the terrorist organization known as Zed. Joe later returned in The Revenge of Shinobi for the Mega Drive, where he started to wear his more familiar grey and red garb, and where he battled the Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man, while Sega presumably battled Marvel's lawyers. Not content with just besting popular to superheroes though, Joe went on to confront Mecha Godzilla in Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master. I guess Zeed just really like basing their outfits and mechanical monstrosities on existing pop culture icons. Depending on who you believe, Joe Musashi also appeared in the Mega Drive game Shadow Dancer, alongside faithful doggy Yamato. However, this is up in the air, as the game itself keeps the ninja protagonist's identity a secret, while the American manual identifies him as Joe coming out of retirement, and the Japanese manual identifies him as a young ninja ninja called Hayate, Joe's son. I guess this mystery just proves that Joe Musashi has the mystique and misdirection side of being a ninja down too. You know, on top of the badass, unstoppable warrior thing. Number 3. Grey Fox 
from a ninja named Joe to a ninja named Frank now, as we look at Metal Gear's Grey Fox, who has been through a lot throughout the series, and wasn't always a cybernetically enhanced super ninja. Originally a foxhound operative, Grey Fox had previously been known as Frank Jaeger, Null, or Just Fox, but ended up opposing former comrade Solid Snake due to his loyalty to the renegade commander Big Boss. Left for dead after a battle against the rigid reptile, Grey Fox's body was recovered, upgraded, and fitted with a powered exoskeleton. This resulted in the exceedingly dangerous Cyber Ninja Metal Gear fans are familiar with today. And this guy comes packed with some impressive tech. Predator-style active camouflage? Check. An arm cannon? Check. Radar damping technology? Check. Oh, and don't forget the super cool sword. Showing up as a tough boss fight throughout the Metal Gear series, Grey Fox is truly one of gaming's foremost ninjas. He also showed up in Smash Bros as an assist character. But even more illustriously, he is a playable character in the Konami Crazy Racers for the Game Boy Advance. Incidentally, try not to confuse him with the Grey Fox from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Sure, he may be sneaky, sure he may wear a mask, but look at this guy. He's no ninja. Number 2. Sub-Zero the Mortal Kombat series is home to two of the most legendary ninjas in video gaming history, with Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and the two elementally opposed shinobi are actually impossible to choose between. After much deliberation, however, we went with Sub-Zero, but you'll have to wait till the end of the entry to find out why. It'll be worth it, I promise. Kwai Lang, far better known as Sub-Zero, is an assassin of the Lin Kuei clan, and uses his icy powers to damage, freeze and harass his opponents before going in for a cheeky spine removal. Garbed in blue to reflect his chilly heart, he truly is one of the most iconic figures in gaming. Just to complicate matters though, the Sub-Zero who appeared in the very first Mortal Kombat is actually a different character. This Sub-Zero, aka Bai Han, has since become a wraith, and is now known as Noob Cybot. For the sake of simplicity though, we're sticking the whole persona of Sub-Zero at number 2 on our list, because, let's face it, to most gamers, Sub-Zero is Sub-Zero. Oh, and the reason we went with Sub-Zero over Scorpion on our list of coolest ninjas, well, Scorpion has fire powers, and Sub-Zero has ice powers of course. He's literally cooler. I told you it'd be worth the wait. And number 1, Ryu Hayabusa. First appearing in 1988's Ninja Gaiden for the NES, Ryu Hayabusa isn't the oldest ninja on our list, with Joe Musashi and Grey Fox both debuting a year earlier. He has, however, stayed at the top of his game for the longest, and has successfully dipped his katana into multiple genres too. Originally leaping to fame in the famously hard trilogy of NES action platformers, Ryu Hayabusa was an instant gaming icon, with his early adventures demanding ninja-like reactions from the player. He next appeared in the Dead or Alive series, which debuted in 1996, thus proving his mettle in the one-on-one -on -one fighter genre. Then, in 2004, original Ninja Gaiden creators Tecmo worked with Microsoft to bring the ultimate ninja to the Xbox in one of the greatest and most difficult hack-and-slash games of all time. This reboot ushered in the Ryu Hayabusa we know today, a modern-day ninja who combines contemporary Spec Ops gear with traditional ninja garb and equipment, and is also bristling with nasty weapons. Capable of felling anything from ancient demons to attack choppers, and proven to dominate in the action platformer, fighting, and hack-and-slash genres, Ryu Hayabusa is the epitome of deadly grace and lethal poise, the ultimate action star and a true ninja for the ages.